Good morning, everybody. So, as I've said to any number of people over the course of my career, if you're going to show up in my office with a problem, I expect you to show up with at least the beginning of a solution. Last week, I showed up in your video feed with a problem. This week, I'm showing up with at least the beginning of a solution. But first, the intro. All right. Well, today, for those curious, I'm enjoying a Black Stag pre-made vanilla latte out of a bottle because I was just too tired to make coffee this morning. And these are really good. Anyway, so last week I said modern digital cameras are too complicated and the response from you guys was unexpectedly, I mean, I figured it would be a popular video, but your feedback and the quantity of feedback and the quality of it and the time you put into your thoughts on that was amazing. Uh, I was unprepared for the amount of time I was going to need to read all those comments. So today I thought what we should do is do some free market research for whichever camera maker out there is savvy enough to sit down and watch this and read the comments you post and take some of our ideas to heart. So as you watch this, write down your ideas about this subject and leave them in a comment. I will read all of them even if I don't get a chance to comment on all of them. I am interested in hearing what you guys would want to do for a simpler digital camera. To that end, here are some ideas that I've come up with over the last week for ways I would make a digital camera simpler. The first one would be something that I talked about last year, where if we look at, there are the three components of having a, a proper exposure. Your sensor sensitivity, or ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture, right? So imagine three dials on top of the camera. You know, like we have the front and rear command dials, but just facing upward, or button combinations if you prefer buttons, whatever. And you can use those to scroll through and, and see on a little LCD screen the settings, your camera's available shutter speeds, including auto, your camera's available sensitivities, including auto, and for lenses with electronic contacts, the available apertures, including auto. Uh, and then what you could do is if you wanted to shoot green box mode, the magic green box, set them all to auto. Do you want to shoot program mode? Set the aperture and shutter speed to auto with the ISO set to whatever you'd like it to be. Then of course you can adjust those dials to make any combination of aperture priority, shutter priority, and full manual where you would also have the ability to have auto ISO or a fixed ISO. That would be, I think three or four of you commented that the whole mode setting program aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, and of course all of the scene modes that the different makers throw on their cameras writ large are just kind of anachronistic and obsolete. Those were the two words I saw for those a few times. Uh, and that's true. That's true. We, there's a completely different and better way to have cameras have that physical interface. Okay. So before we start getting into the operations of this camera, I want you to kind of imagine in your mind the whole thing. So we've got those three dials or three button combinations, right, that allow you to control those three parameters. Now imagine on the back of it, there's in the top and the sides, wherever you're happy with the buttons being, that there are buttons and none of them are marked, except menu. You've got the three, the three button combos or dials for sensitivity, ISO, and, and uh, sensitivity, shutter speed, and aperture, and then a button marked menu. And then the rest of the buttons have symbols. Think about video game controllers. A, B, Y, X, uh, X, circle, triangle, square, you could do plus sign, minus sign, filled in circle, open circle, filled in box, open box, things like that. Different symbols for every button except menu. Okay, 
So imagine that in your mind. There's nothing on the actual camera that's labeled specifically except the menu button. Now, what this is, this is, by the way, how I would build a camera. If one of the camera makers called me up today and said, hey, would you like to come develop a camera's user interface? As you see fit for us, we'll give you carte blanche to do it. This is how I would do it. So then you've got all these buttons that are just symbols. They can effectively then be whatever you want them to be. Right? You could have the shutter button be fixed and the power button be fixed, whatever, yes. But the other buttons, the, the ones that we would use to control white balance or uh, drive mode or things like that, all of them are just assigned symbols with no specific button being labeled anything but menu. So you buy your camera, you open it up, and when you turn it on for the first time, it goes into basically what I would call easy mode, but what a savvy marketing team, I, if I had the, a savvy marketing team at my disposal, would come up with a better name for. When you power it on, the only buttons at work are those three dials or button combinations on the top and the menu button. And then, of course, like the shutter button, obviously. But when you turn it on and you, you push the menu button, it goes into something, it's a little screen that says, easy mode is active. Would you like to enter intermediate mode? We'll call it that. There's certainly a better name for it. So at that point, the only button that works other than the three buttons or dials that are used to adjust the exposure parameters is the menu button. All the others, well, and the shutter button, but all the other buttons are functionless. Go into the menu button, and that, by the way, allows you to completely take still images, video, whatever, with just those basic settings and no other configuration. Really easy to set up and just run. Most of the parameters you would want to have are just defaulted to on. Things like shoot without a lens, shoot without a card, all of those things, anything that would impair the camera from being used to take a video or a picture is turned on so that it would be maximally usable with the highest quality image settings right out of the box. Okay. Then if you go into the menu and you turn off easy mode, it brings up what I would call intermediate mode, a mode where the menu structure comprises only the 10% of features that are most commonly used out of all of the features that are included on modern digital cameras. Maybe 10% is too many. Maybe it's 5%. If a digital camera has 300 features to pick a number, Maybe you only want to be able to adjust 15, not 30 in advanced, in intermediate mode rather, whatever. So it's a limited cast of features that's, res that's limited to the ones that people most typically adjust. That would be intermediate mode. It brings up the menu system with just those common features. Then in one of the menus, there would be enable advanced mode or power user mode or something like that, which brings up a menu system that has everything. Everything the camera can do, everything that can be adjusted is then adjustable in that mode. So what that would do is somebody who's moving into digital cameras from cell phones and used to the simplicity of picking up the cell phone, opening the screen, clicking the button and taking a photo, could grab their camera, power it on, hold up the screen to their eye or the EVF to their eye, whatever, and take a photo. So out of the box, the digital camera would mimic the simple shooting experience of the cell phone. Okay, someone who has experience with digital cameras, some experience with them, wants to be able to configure a handful of things, can then go enable that intermediate mode and configure the things that they need to configure. Or that very entry level user who's only ever shot cell phones before after a few weeks or months and they've increased their comfort, can then move into that intermediate mode and adjust more things. Okay. Now, where's advanced mode? For the advanced users who want and need to configure things like frame rate on your, vi on your video or video resolution, image resolution, how, you, 
how what buttons do what assigning different functions to different buttons like complex functions things like that would then have the ability to go in and really totally customize their camera exactly as they want in that advanced mode intermediate mode would would be a really good opportunity to assign some standard functions to those symbol buttons that uh, would allow quick access with those buttons to different functions like white balance and drive mode and things like that. And then the advanced mode would allow those default button assignments to be adjusted as anyone sees fit to make the camera their own. So whereas last week I said digital cameras are too complex, if it were me, this is how I would make them less complex. We're not actually taking away any of the complexity of digital cameras. What we're doing is making them more accessible out of the box to more people, less intimidating out of the box for more people. And then as people are more comfortable, they can expand that menu system. They can expand the functions that their camera can do. They're all still there. It's just a matter of turning on the ability to, to use them and adjust them as comfort levels grow. And so for someone like me, pulls the brand new camera out of the box, goes straight to advanced mode and starts assigning button assignments and whatever else and setting up the exact way that I want the camera to work. That would be how I would do it. It would be, I would hope, a really nice marriage of easy, very simple use to very complex use in the same box. And all of that is software driven. When you think about like back in the day, if a camera needed to have a new feature, okay, it's 1961 and I want to add a self timer to my camera. Well, I got to put a button in the front or somewhere else. I got to put a wind up gear mechanism in there and I've got to make space for that. I've got to adjust the size of the other components so that the overall chassis doesn't shift. Back in the day, a new feature meant a re-engineering of the camera's internals, sometimes to a limited extent, sometimes to a greater extent. Now, a new feature involves getting a team of coders, a handful of people to write some code, QC it, make sure that it doesn't break anything else, and roll it out to the cameras. It is completely possible to make a camera that is built, has built into it unlimited complexity and unlimited simplicity just by the way that the software is written. And then the last part of it comes down to the way that the menus are structured. And a lot of the digital camera makers have legacy menu problems and that's I, Nikon and, and Canon have had an opportunity to get past that. They, they've released new lineups. They can start over with menus as they see fit. But it's the same sort of issue that Adobe has with a lot of their pro programs. They started off with a small feature set. And as they added more features over the years, they would nest them where it made sense to, to add those new features in the menus. But that didn't account for the features they had not yet thought of in the future. And those would just kind of get nested in. So a lot of the legacy software, like the Adobe software, has menus that are not perfectly logical and can be very confusing to people starting off using them. Were, were it me designing a camera, I would say, let's ignore the past menu system. Let's take all, let's, re, let's it, revision how we structure this. Let's take all of the things that this camera can do. Let's structure them logically by how much they're used, what they affect, and things like that. If you want to keep a tabbed menu system, that's fine. Go through, go through the tabs one layer deep. Minimal depth to the menu system and just keep the naming conventions as simple as possible. Because a lot of the naming conventions also are legacy naming conventions. They're a hair confusing. So, it's not just imagining the way that the software operates, the way that the camera physically interfaces, but also the way that the menu system is structured and streamlining and simplifying that menu system so that it is more understandable and accessible and more well-organized than 
previous menu systems, which a lot of which have legacy menu DNA from the beginning of the DSLR era when things were not quite as well laid out. So at any rate, those are some of my ideas for how to take overly complex digital cameras and simplify them for a larger market. And I really look forward to reading your guys' ideas on how you would do it too. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.